very unassuming manner during the time when Quirinius was governor of Syria. A baby was born in a small town outside of Jerusalem to a young woman. Years later, when trying to recall that birth, very few could remember it. A small band of shepherds were there at the beckoning of angels, while sometime later a band of travelers from the east were led to the child by a star. But that is all we know of his birth. We know even less of his childhood, other than a family pilgrimage, which found the young man lost in discussion at the temple. He lived the next 30 years in virtual anonymity. But a bath in a small stream and 40 days wandering in a wilderness where he faced his own demons would change all that. The next three years were quite a trip a journey that would ultimately lead to his demise. His many followers would tell you that he did nothing wrong, unless, of course, you find fault with healing the sick, feeding the hungry, raising the dead, and preaching about the love of God. Yet these very things ruffled the feathers of the religious leaders who, out of jealousy and anger, manipulated the populace and the political powers in order to have him put to death. So in a very public manner, during the time when Pilate was governor of Judea, Jesus of Nazareth was hung on a cross to die as an enemy of the state. One of his followers said that he was the Word with a capital W, the Word become flesh. In other words, he was the incarnate God. Yet with his death on the cross, this claim and the hopes that he embodied for so many seemed to come to a screeching halt. But on the third day of his death, on the first day of the week, all doubts about Jesus being the Word incarnate, the Son of God, were removed. For on that third day, women came, and they found the tomb empty. Peter, too, went to the tomb. He also found it empty. Later that day, Jesus himself appeared to them in person, first to two as they walked along a road, and then to all the apostles in Jerusalem. Over the next 40 days, he appeared to many, many more so that the world might know that God wins the final victory. Today, we celebrate with believers throughout the world as we raise our voices and proclaim, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
Hello and welcome to worship on this glorious Easter Sunday. It's so good to have you join us. My name is Jeff Schlesinger. I'm the pastor of Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish, which is made up of Emmanuel Lutheran Church south of Compton, Illinois, which is where I am standing right now, uh, and First Lutheran Church, which is up in Lee, Illinois. We are elated to have you with us here on this Easter Sunday. Uh, if it's early enough, I invite you to come and join us in person. Uh, we're gathering at Emmanuel at 8.30 in the morning and at first uh, at 10.30 in the morning. Uh, if you're not able to join us today, please, by all means, come and join us next week and or the week after and continue to join us. We'd love to have you. That is our regular Sunday morning worship schedule. Uh, we will continue to provide an online presence uh, for those who aren't able to be here or just not comfortable yet being in, in groups of people as we continue uh, to work our way out of this pandemic. What a glorious day it is today. Uh, we are excited to be gathering in person uh, for Easter worship for the first time in, uh, since 2019, but we're also excited to be able to share our new skills and come to you via these videos. Thanks again, and we uh, continue the service uh, with the thanksgiving for baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs to your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning, and I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming. Blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. 
He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Our first reading on this Easter Sunday is from the 10th chapter of Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Here ends the first reading. Our psalm on this Easter Sunday is portions of the 118th psalm. I invite you to join in with the bold print as if we were in person reading it responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And our second reading on this Easter Sunday is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. 
But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And our Easter gospel today is from the 24th chapter of Luke. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside him. them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the leaven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to the apostles an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. You know, there's not really a whole lot more that I can tell you about Easter, about the resurrection, than what others have already said so many times. I don't necessarily have a whole lot new to share with you today. You actually heard a great Easter sermon at the beginning of the service. You know, when we simply told the story and what it means for us. And then that sermon itself concluded with the best proclamation, the best sermon that we can make any Easter, every Easter, and in fact, every Sunday for that matter, and that is, and please join me, that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So since I'm at a loss on what to say, let me just say this. Next time you go to the movies, think of Jesus and the resurrection. Got it? Good. Amen. Now, if I had guts, I would actually end the sermon there and leave you pondering this odd statement. When you go to the movies, think of Jesus and the resurrection. If I had get guts, I'd just leave it right there. But I don't. And I am a preacher, after all. We always have something to say. Or at least we think we do. I am serious, by the way. Next time you go to the movies, I want you to think about Jesus and the res resurrection. Let me explain. A few days ago, on Monday, Thursday, this verse popped into my mind. This verse that I read today, that we read today, uh, that we read every year on Easter Sunday, the verse that we often use as a call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
let us rejoice and be glad in it. Each Sunday, each year on Easter Sunday, we read from Psalm 118 and we read that verse. That verse has been with me for many, many years. I remember hearing it first and, and memorizing it when I was an 18-year-old listening to the radio. 17-year-old I probably was. That was just seven or eight years ago, of course. But I thought of that verse on Monday, Thursday this year as we completed the stripping of the altar. If, you, if you've never been to a Monday, Thursday service and you haven't seen that, it's, it's a very dramatic and moving liturgical experience. Uh, on that night in which Jesus be, was betrayed, the last day of his life, we symbolically remove all ornamentation from our chancel. The candles are gone, the, the altar cloths are gone, the pyramids, the colored pyramids are gone. Uh, obviously, there's flowers here all over the place. There is absolutely nothing left. Sometimes we put a cross on the altar and drape it with a black cloth, but it's very symbolic that death is in the air and it's final. And it's final. When we do that, one of the common ways to do that is to do it with the, the reading or the chanting, but since I'm not very musical, I read it, the reading of Psalm 22. And it's as I concluded that reading, in the very dramatic fashion that we do on Monday, Thursday, that this verse from today's psalm popped into my mind. See, we concluded that service the altar was stripped bare. The lights were down low, just about all off, and I was reading the final verse. And as I read the final verse, once I'm done, I slam the book shut. This is the final verse. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. Bang! book slam shut. This year, when I heard that verse, my mind went right to this 24th verse of today's psalm. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Where is the tie, you're saying? Pastor, what are you talking about? One is a happy verse. One ends with death at the door. There's a common word there that we don't hear in English, but we could. There's a common Hebrew word that connects those. That phrase, this is the day that the Lord has made, and that phrase, the Lord has acted, the word made and the word acted, they're the exact same word in Hebrew. Like many words we have in English, it's a word that has multiple meanings, and, and that word indeed does have multiple meanings, but I knew that that was the exact same word because not too long ago I had heard a translation of Psalm 118 where the verse that I put before you today is translated, On this day the Lord has acted. Let us be festive and rejoice in it. The Lord has acted, we said on Monday, Thursday, slamming the book shut. The last act liturgically we did before the day of Jesus' death. It makes a direct tie between Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and today, Easter Sunday, the day of resurrection. Here's the thing. Just when things seem their most dire, God acts. That's the story in the scriptures throughout. It begins in Genesis. After giving this wonderful promise to Abraham and his descendants, when you read Genesis, it looks like that promise is dead in the waters because Abraham's descendants are suffering from famine. It looks like they're going to be wiped out by this global famine. But thanks to Joseph, and you got to read that story. It's a wonderful story. Joseph, who was betrayed and sold into slavery into Egypt, but then rose. Joseph saves the entire family. 
They were on the brink of death. Yet when that happens, they are saved by the unlikely younger child. The story happens again in Exodus, where things seem their most dire, but God acts. The, Moses has just led the people out of Egypt. The, the Israelites, who, who now number something like 600,000, it says in the scriptures, have marched out of Egypt, freeing themselves from slavery to the Egyptians. But as they march out, suddenly the Egyptian army chases them, and their backs are up against the wall, or more literally, up against the Red Sea, because they got the army, the most powerful army in the whole world on one side, and a sea on the other, nowhere to go. Yet then God gives Moses the ability to part that sea, and they can walk right through to the other side to safety, and just as they get through, the waters close up, and the Egyptian army, which followed them in, chasing them, is all drowned. When things seem their most dire, God acts. Sagas such as that continue throughout our story of the Old Testament. When it looks like God's people are finished, there's a dramatic turn of events, and they're pulled out of danger. But finally, God gets tired of this cycle, and God says, okay, enough of this. I'm going to show the world exactly how much I love them, and thus the incarnation. Even God's presence in the world, though, seems to be doomed as Jesus is put to death on the cross. But God acts once again. Resurrection. Nothing separates us from that love that God has for us. When things seem their worst, God acts. Now, do you see the tie? Do you see the tie between Easter and the movies? Every good movie, brothers and sisters, every good movie is using our story. Well, at least... They're using our plot line. They're using the Christian story, the Christian plot line to make their movies good. It's true. Whether it's an action movie, a suspense movie, a a science fiction, a mystery, they all use variations of the story of resurrection. The hero rises to prominence or notoriety, but then adversity occurs and the viewer is thinking all is lost and suddenly the super emergent Superhero emerges out of the wreckage, or or Han Solo and Luke Skywalker come together again, or, or a hidden clue is brought to light, and the good guys prevail and or the bad guy is captured. Unless, of course, there's a sequel that is being set up, in which case you may have to wait till the next movie for that to happen. But this happens again and again. It even happens in rom-coms, only it happens on a relationship level. Two people begin to fall in love. Most often it's an unlikely match, of course. And then as this love begins to blossom, tension comes along in the relationship, which threatens the relationship and more often than not results in a breakup. But then, against all odds, the chasm is breached and the two come back together for the happily ever after finale. And movies play our Christian storyline again and again and again, brothers and sisters. All seems lost, but then God acts, and there is resurrection, new life, Easter. So yes, when you go to the movies, think about Easter and Jesus and the resurrection. God acts, dear siblings in Christ. God acted on Maundy Thursday and Good Friday. God acts on Easter Sunday. And God will act tomorrow and the next day and the next. And there is no better way to witness to that action than to make the Easter proclamation of the resurrection. 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Touch that Zeus and heals the hurting, hands that break a loaf of bread, steps that walk beside the weary, bearing burdens in their stead. See my hands and feet and Jesus, love arisen from the grave. Be my hands and feet and Jesus. I died to save. <clears throat> Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit ones in need of care. Give the homeless warmth and shelter, Christ will find a welcome there. See my hand and feet and Jesus love arisen from the grave be my hands and feet and Jesus live as ones I died to save love and serve without distinction all our speed that back in little children find a wound prepare a meal feed that rush to share good tidings Christ arisen still reveal see my hands and feet and Jesus love arisen from the grave be my hands and feet and Jesus, love is ones I died to save. We are made God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. Renewing God, the goodness of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb and inspire us to share your abundant life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sustaining God, 
Your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants, and provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sheltering God, strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world. Empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave their homelands. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way. Send us as your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith formation, worship, and discipleship. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faith faithful witnesses who now rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer to you these positions, these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. At this time, I invite you to consider making an offering to Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish so we can continue uh, to be viable in ministry. Thanks to generous people such as you, uh, we have been able to continue to be a presence and to proclaim the good news of Jesus and act on behalf of the world uh, in the midst of this pandemic. And as we continue to transition out of it and, and exercise our, our new skills that we've learned and reclaim our old ones, I encourage you uh, to support us. Uh, giving to Heart of Illinois Lutheran truly is giving to God's work. Perhaps the easiest way to do so, especially if you aren't joining us in person, is to use electronic means or the mail. Uh, if you uh, would like to use electronic means, our websites are listed on the screen. Both of them have giving portals. We also have Venmo available. Uh, you see that on the screen as well if you use that medium. Uh, of course, you can always mail them in or drop off offerings in person. Just a few announcements uh, regarding this week. We do have a couple funerals coming up this week on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday afternoon, we'll have our regularly scheduled tea time. Um, but uh, Bible study this week on Friday will not be happening. Uh, we'll resume that the following week. Uh, Manual Council will be meeting this week on Tuesday as well. Uh, next week, our worship times are the normal times of 8.30 at Emmanuel and 10.30 at first, and you're invited to join us in, at, at those. Uh, this, uh, our, our weekend service will be made available uh, uh, at, to watch at your convenience. That is all the announcements we have at this time, but there is one more offering before we give thanks to God for the offerings we received. Uh, uh, a joint bell choir from the two congregations of Heart of Illinois got together and recorded this for you. Enjoy this Easter piece. One, two,
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered as one in the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.